Hello everyone, I hope everybody is having a great day so far. In this video we're going to continue on with the term frequency inverse document frequency tutorial. In the introduction video of this playlist I sort of laid out what we are going to be doing, so please check that out if you haven't. Uh, but basically I'm going to attempt to try to understand term frequency document fre inverse document frequency by sort of manually calculating it myself. So take everything with a grain of salt here because I am not an expert. And if you have suggestions, please let me know. Before we start coding here, though, I have made a video on how I set up my environment in another playlist, and I'll put a link here uh, to the top. I'm using PyCharm, which is an interactive development environment, and uh, I'm also using Anaconda 3. I think it's 3. Yeah, Anaconda 3. But you don't have to use those. If you just have Python installed and you have your own favorite text editor, that's totally fine. But if you want to see how I set mine up, just check out that link. To begin though, I will start by just making a new project. <clears throat> and I will call this TFIDF. I think that would make sense. And if you don't know, in PyCharm, you can actually select which interpreter you want to use from a different environment, because in Anaconda you can set up multiple environments. Uh, so I, you can see here I have a 3.5 and a 3.6 environment. Let's go with 3.6 for this tutorial. I'll just open that up. Excellent, so there's a new project. So I'm just going to pull up the Wikipedia document again quick to just talk about term frequency. So ultimately in this tutorial, we're going to calculate the term frequency adjusted for document length. I think that's also called the normalized term frequency. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. In this first video, though, let's just get the raw count because ultimately you can see here that the adjusted document length is the raw count divided by the number of words in the document. So we need the we need the raw count first anyway. And I will explain what the raw count is just in a moment here. Let's make a new file. I think it will be easier to understand uh, with document if I make just with an example here. So let's make a list of documents. So we're just going to have a list of very simple sentences without any punctuation and without any capitals or anything because we want to keep this simple. Um, in reality, with NLTK or SKLearn, you can use their, you know, all that awesome NLP stuff to process text, but we'll keep it simple here. So I'm going to say the universe has very many stars, and I'm going to say the galaxy contains many stars. So those are sort of similar, but not exactly the same. The cold breeze, oops, I'm spelling that wrong. Winter made it very cold outside, sort of different. So there's three simple sentences and the term frequency is, so let's say we take the word the, the term the, and we wanna see how many times does that term appear in this document or in our case sentence. Well, it appears once. And the term frequency adjusted for document frequency would be one divided by the number of total words, one, two, three, four, five, six. Great. So that would be uh, the term frequency. But let's just start with the count. So maybe another example, cold appears twice in this sentence. So the term frequency of cold in this sentence would be two. So to do this, uh, let me just maybe make a, make a little comment here. So we're going to calculate term frequency. And then the first thing we want to do, let's make another comment here, is tokenize words. So I believe this is the correct terminology here. Tokenizing words is when you take each of the words in this sentence and make them their own element in a list. And then we can count how many times that element appears in the list. To do this, I'm going to use the enumerate function and also a dictionary of words. So let's make a dictionary of words and just initialize that. And to initialize a dictionary in Python, you use the curly braces. And then I'm going to do a for loop index and sentence in, and this is where the enumerate function comes in. Enumerate. Oh, I think I was starting to spell that wrong. Okay. And we're going to enumerate the list of documents. So just to kind of understand what exactly enumerate does, let's print the index and then run this program and see what happens. All right. So down here, you can see that 
so we have three elements in the documents list and at index zero you know there's this one index one is the second element and index two is this third element so that's what the index is and then so what is sentence can anybody guess what the sentence will be let's run and find out boom it's going to be the actual elements that are at those indexes so then what we can do is we can print out both the index and the sentence and you can see that at zero, index zero, we have this first element, and index one, we have this second element. And this is great. It, it's kind of handy, and it's a nice way. That's what the enumerate function does. But let's do something a little more interesting with that. We don't just want to print it out to the console. We want to tokenize those words. So let's make another list called tokenized words. Some camel casing there. And we will get those tokenized words by taking the sentence. Remember, the sentence is this portion. We're going to take that sentence and we are going to split it on the spaces because each word is separated by a space. Now, if you so that so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that and we're going to put that into a list of each each of these elements. So if I now print tokenize words, we should be able to see uh, yeah, there we go. So now you can see instead of just a string, it is now a, its own list with each word separated. And now that we have that, we can do a count, which is pretty fantastic. Um, so I think this part, this next part's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to type it all out and then let's talk about it. So I'm going to take it, the dictionary of words that we initialized up at the top, and I'm going to say at this index, I want to put a list and this is going to be what's called a list comprehension in Python and I'm going to be using something called a tuple or a tuple I'm not actually sure what the right pronunciation is but it's essentially a immutable list can't be changed and I'm going to take here the word and how you make a tuple is with just the normal parentheses separate things by commas so we're going to take the word and then the tokenized word dot count the word how many times does that word appear in the list four uh, do I have two parentheses there no nope, that's good for word in tokenized words perfect so let's print this out real quick and then kind of talk through that because I know that when the first time I saw this sort of list comprehension thing, I was super confused. I think it'll make a little more sense once we print out the dictionary of words, hopefully. And let's print that out. There we go. So what we've got is in this dictionary of words now, we have at index zero a list of tuples, right? So here's it's a list because we've got the square brackets here that makes it a list and then we have a bunch of tuples and you can tell they're tuples because you can see the parentheses here separated by commas so they're a list of tuples and these tuples have contained the word or the term and the number of times that word appears in that sentence so for example the appears once the universe appears once in this sentence and if let's take a look at this third sentence, for example, so the third sentence is at index two. So let's find two. So that's index one. And I'm probably just missing. There it is. Index two is right there. So that would be the third sentence. And for example, cold appears twice in this sentence. So if we look at the word cold, we see that it appears twice. Awesome. So we could change it. So for example, Let's say the appeared twice in this first sentence, right? So let's say I put the here and I rerun this program. We'll see this in the seat. Now it comes up to two. Now, there's a little interesting thing going on here. We got the and it appears twice and the and it appears twice. Okay, that's great. But we don't really need to see the twice. We just need to know that the appears twice. So later on in some you know future tutorials, we'll remove these duplicates. So, okay, great. So now we kind of understand what we've got and we see that we have a term frequency, which is awesome. What exactly is this? What's going on here? How does this work? So essentially the sort of structure of a list comprehension, you know, you got another, at least so you can have like a new list, right? Equals square brackets because we want to make it 
a new list from another list. So it's basically a, a compressed way to do a for loop and append things to a new list without having to actually write out for, you know, x in list, get x, do something with it, and then append it to this new other list. This is sort of a way to uh, compress it. So the syntax uses x for x in uh, old list, I'll call it. And what we can see is basically what we're going to do is we're going to add this element to this list, you know, every time. And then you can do stuff to this. So in our example here, we we took that x word and we counted how many times it came up and then packaged that all together in a tuple and then put it into this dictionary at this index. And that's how we got this result. All right, awesome. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. And great, we'll leave it at here for this video. In the next video, we'll continue on with this and we will remove these duplicate words, like the, like we don't wanna see it come up twice, we just wanna see that the word comes up twice. So we'll do that in the next video. And then maybe in that video also, we will uh, get that adjusted, uh, what, what was it called again? The adjusted for document length. So we'll divide, we'll do the division uh, by each of the total number of terms in that sentence as well. All right, well, thank you so much. If you're liking this content, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.